Hi everyone and welcome to Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. I am Bridget indeed and you are most welcome to be a part of this journey today and it's a fabulous journey because today I get to officially launch for pre-sale my next healthy cookbook which is called Treat Yourself Healthy. That is now available for anyone to order for pre-sale and you just need to go to Treat Yourself healthy.net and pre-order your copy and the reason why I, I suggest you do is this book is going to be absolutely incredible. In fact, it is not only my largest book to date, so there's over 200 recipes, but all the recipes are delicious, they're comforting, they are guilt-free snacks, sweets, cakes, muffins, cookies, pies, puddings, cheese hacks, you name it, if it's a healthy treat, it is in my book. So basically this book will teach you how to master the art of healthy baking and cooking. And it's available, yay! It's been nine months in the making so far. It's taken us nine months to get to this point where today we can say to you guys that it is available for pre-sale. So we're expecting the book to be start to be um, posted around about early to mid-September. But if you order your copy now, not only will you get 10% off, so it's a pre-sale uh, special. So the book is priced at $39.95 Australian. That includes tax, so you don't have to worry about putting adding tax onto it. All you've got to do is pay for postage. So $39.95 is the pre-sale uh, sale price, pre-sale sale price. Available now, treatyourselfhealthy.net. It is an exciting day. Nine months it's taken us to get here, but we are finally here. And because it is such a wonderful day, let's cook a recipe straight from the cookbook. So this is a cook the book cooking class. Today we're going to be making a lemon meringue tarts. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make the most incredible vegan, would you believe, lemon curd. So no eggs in that lemon curd, uh, no butter as well. But as well as that, I will be also showing you how to make an amazing meringue to sit on top of it. And we're making the most gorgeous little lemon meringue tarts. I reckon we should probably get into the recipe. Don't you reckon? I reckon. We're going to start off with the lemon curd, by the way. So lemon curd is pretty simple to make. And because there's no eggs in it, there's no risk that we're going to scramble our lemon curd, which can be quite common when you are making a curd, which is normally made with eggs. So I've taken out all the eggs, but we're going to replace it with something, right? You'll be maybe a little bit surprised at some of the ingredients that I've actually got in this lemon curd today. So um, the first thing you'll notice, I'm working with a metal bowl. It's a lot easier to control the heat um, when you are uh, cooking something like a curd or even a custard by using a metal bowl. If you don't have a metal bowl, then you can, of course, use heat-proof glass bowl as well. So I'm going to be doing mine into the metal bowl today. I'm going to be starting off with coconut milk. That is going to go in. We need two, uh, 200 and 400. <laughs> Four, I better get the ingredients right, shouldn't I? 400 mils of coconut milk which is 13.5 ounces. So that's the first thing that you need to do. Put all your coconut milk into there. And as well as that, you just need to also, of course, add the lemon. And we are using fresh lemon. I definitely suggest that you use fresh lemon with this and not um, like pre-juiced like, lemon. It's just not the same. If you can get hold of fresh lemons, they are in abundance here in Australia at the moment because we're, we're still in the throes of winter. So the first thing I'm going to do using my microplane here is I'm going to remove the zest from the skin of the lemon. So we know how much flavor is in the zest of the lemon. And in total, you need about a tablespoon or let's say one lemon finely zested. I love using a microplane because it gets it nice and small. And um, you could also use a box grater, but just make sure you're using the smallest or the finest um, side of the grater to make sure you're getting a lovely fine zest. So we don't want any of the white stuff, just the peel. And that is going to go in, give it a bit of a scrape to make sure you're accessing all of that wonderful flavour that comes from the peel. We are also going to juice our lemon as well. So that's why I've zested first as you can see, because then we'll move on to the juicing after that. We're just going to cut it in half. And for the juice, we need 60 mils of our uh, lemon juice 
and depending on how much juice is in your lemons will determine how many you need to use. You might find that 60 mils you use uh, one lemon, you may have really not very juicy lemons, so you might have to use a couple more. So you want that 60, oh, 60 mil quantity, I need a bit more. So I'm going to be adding the other half. Good way to use up lemons is to make lots of curd. <laughs> it does definitely it's pretty amazing and the texture is really good as well. So have a lap at 60 ml or 2 ounces of our zest and sorry of our juice and our zest is already in there. We are also going to uh, weigh off the dry ingredients that's going to go on there but I like to mix the dry ingredients into my bowl first just to make sure everything is well combined before it goes into the liquid. So for the dry ingredients we're going to be adding in for sweetness and also for prebiotic quality, which as you guys, if anyone knows me, you know how much prebiotic quality, how important it is for our gut health, our gut microbiome. So into our bowl, we're going to be adding in 60 grams of our pure as inulin powder. Of course, it's going to add a, a lovely sweetness to our curd, but it's also adding dietary fiber, that soluble fiber, that our gut bacteria absolutely love. So 60 grams or two ounces of our Pure-As Inulin powder goes in there. I'm also gonna be adding, just to help to thicken the curd, I'm gonna be adding some tapioca starch or tapioca flour. And you need 45 grams of the flour goes in there. So 45 grams. Perfect. We're also gonna add, just to help to balance up those flavors, a pinch of mineral salt is going in there as well. But we need to add a bit of colour, and this is where it might surprise you, <laughs> but I'm using. I am using to give us some colour to our curd, because you know we get the colour from the egg yolks, right, which we don't have. I'm using turmeric powder. So you just want to make sure that you are using turmeric powder to kind of be really conscious that this will, will make it very colourful. And you don't want it to be orange, you kind of want it to be a lemony yellow. So you're after you know, not even half a teaspoon, like I'm just, I'm sort of about a third of a teaspoon. Uh, if you like it a little bit, you can, you know, add a bit more if you want to, but just be aware that it does make things very, very orange if we add too much, which we don't want to do. So once you've got all your dry ingredients ready to go, give it a bit of a whisk together, bring it all together nicely, and then we're going to add it into our wet ingredients and once again I'm going to be doing that with the whisk just to make sure it's really well blended and that's kind of the ingredients to your curd it's not that much to it is it it's pretty it's pretty interesting you know, it's a it's a cross between a curd and a custard which I absolutely love I love these amazing textures that you get from it so give it a little whisk over here on my cooktop I have a pot with about that much water into it and what you want to do is you want to make sure that the base of your bowl does not come into contact with the water. We actually want to use steam in order to cook this curd really gently. And um, we don't want to cook it too, too, too vigorously. So turning on your cooktop onto medium, we're going to bring the water to a simmer. Definitely not a boil, just bring it to a simmer. And then we're going to cook our curd on here while that water is simmering away. It's going to take around about sort of five minutes of, um, once the water has come up to the simmer, around about five minutes of you stirring and whisking continuously to get your curd up to that, that ability that when you put a spoon into it, it actually coats the back of the spoon. That's a really important consistency when it comes to curds and making custards. And you will find lots of custards in the book, by the way. The lemon curds in the book, of course but I've also got other types of, of amazing custards in there for you guys to try as well. And you'll notice that this technique that I'm using here, um, which is you know, basically simmering the water and then placing a bowl so it doesn't come into contact with the water, helps to give a very, very gentle cook. Because sometimes if we were to put certain mixtures straight into the pot, what can happen is they can burn or they can catch on the pot or they can scramble if you're making an egg-based custard as well, which we don't want them to scramble. So you'll see this technique 
used quite often in the book. And this is also the best and easiest and most efficient way to melt chocolate. So you, if you're looking at this now, this is a really great technique for you to learn because you will see it quite a lot showing up in the book because it's a pretty fabulous one. So while that's kind of doing that, I am keeping an eye on it, of course. We're going to move on to the meringue. So, oh yes, one of my favorite bits of equipment. Once again, this is going to show up in the book as well. <laughs> because we are making meringue, and then whether you're making pavlova or you're making what we are today, meringue, uh, it's a really good idea that you do that using an electric cake mixer. You can do it by hand with a whisk, but oh my goodness, it's so incredibly hard, time consuming, <laughs> and you've got to have pretty big muscles for that. So, you know, why not? Why not make the most of what, you know, what technology has given us? And by all means, you know, use an electric cake mixer for this, especially when it comes to meringues and pavlovas. I'm just keeping an eye on this, obviously. I don't want it to catch it, I want it to burn. Making sure the water's not boiling too vigorous, it's just boiling, which is good. So when it comes to the meringue, really simple to make when you've got one of these guys. It's not hard. And the first thing that we need to discuss when it comes to meringue of any type is, of course, the egg quality that's going into there. So I have four large eggs, and I will be um, separating the whites from the yolks because we don't need the yolks for this, we just need the whites. And the best way to do that, rather than doing it straight into the bowl of your mixer, is actually to do it just off to the side, just in case, because the, the enemy of um, egg whites is egg yolk when it comes to making these types of meringue. You definitely don't want to have any yolk in there, otherwise what can happen is it does not meringue and get all fluffy because of the egg yolk that's in there. So it's definitely a good idea to do this away from the bowl. So then all you're adding in is the white, just in case you, know, you get a yolk that breaks or you're not able to separate it quite right. Sometimes that happens. So it's just nice if you do it just like this. And then all you're adding is white straight into there. And also, you don't know, get any shell in there. You can take the shell out. Because if you were to get yolk at this point in time into the white, um, if you can't fully remove the yolk, which can be quite difficult, you need to start again. So you don't want to waste anything, obviously. This is looking good too, by the way. This is looking really, really good. I suggest if it's the first time you've ever made a curd or a custard like this, I would suggest you do this step. And then move on to the meringue, just to keep an eye on it. It definitely helps to be across it as opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to doing something else. This is definitely advisable. And we're just looking for it to start to um, heat up, thicken up nicely for us and become more curd or more custard-like. So our last white is getting put into our bowl. Ooh, in there goes the yolk. I was being very mindful of that. Thank you. All right, and then it goes in here. So that is stage number one. This is the first thing that we need to do. As well as that, we need to mix together the, um, the sugars. And of course, when I say sugar, I don't mean sugar. <laughs> do I? No, I don't. I mean we need to mix together our sugar alternatives, our healthy sugar alternatives that are going to be used to sweeten up our meringue. And what I have in my, my little bowl here is I have 60 grams of zero and sugar, so that's our pure erythritol. I've got 60 grams of that, but I've made it into a fine powder, as you can see. It almost looks like icing sugar. So I've made it into a fine powder by mixing it in my spice grinder till it literally becomes this amazing fine powder. So that's the first stage, is we've basically made powdered sugar or icing sugar using zero sugar. Pretty clever, right? And we do need quite a fine sugar here. I'm turning this off now because I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but that is thickened nicely. It is ready to go, so I can actually take that off the heat completely and let that begin to cool down, which is wonderful. So I'm going to be doing that just over here. Letting that cool down. So to our, our zero as powdered sugar, 
I'm also going to be adding some inulin. So the inulin that I'm adding, here we are, I will be adding 60 grams or 2 ounces of inulin powder, which means we have a total of um, 120 grams of our sweetener. There we go. So 60 grams. And that's for 4 egg whites, by the way. Adding enough of this in. And you know we've now added that prebiotic quality to that meringue as well, which is fantastic. You give it a bit of a stir together. The only thing else we need to add to this powder is we need to add a little bit of cream of tartar. And cream of tartar is going to help those egg whites to hold together, which is wonderful. And you're going to be adding in three quarters of a teaspoon of cream of tartar goes into that as well. So we can begin the process of mixing our egg whites together. And we're going to be doing that, of course, using a whisk. Now the first stage that we are looking for, and we come stand over here, the first stage that we're looking for when it comes to this, is we're looking for the whites to start to get frothy. That's stage number one. So I'm just turning this off so you can kind of see what we're having here. It's, it's bubbly, it's a bit frothy, probably needs about another 30 seconds I reckon. So you can see it's really frothy now, which is fantastic. We can, as soon as it starts to leave very light streaks through the whites, we can start to very slowly incorporate our powder. So back on again. One tablespoon at a time. Give it time to incorporate. Another one. to the mix. And that is some xanthan gum. You could also use burr gum as well. If I can get it open, that is. There we go. Just need a little bit of xanthan gum. It's just going to help to thicken um, it and emulsify the eggs. And you just want to add in half a teaspoon into our, into our last bit of our dry ingredients. Give it a bit of a stir through. Can you see how glossy these look already? They look wonderful. Back on we go.
Now I did forget to mention, ooh, do you see that? Looking good. I did forget to mention that if you need to, scrape down the bowl as you're going, just to make sure that we're getting all the sweetness into the egg whites. And I also forgot to mention, you have to use eggs that are at room temperature, not cold from the fridge, because otherwise you won't get as nice bouncy meringue. So we're going to keep going a little bit further, a little bit longer. whether it's good is when you pull the whisk out it should leave the shape of the meringue in the white so you, you actually get the shape sorry of the whisk in the meringue it holds its shape really well which is lovely so this is looking really really good I'm happy with that we can move on to the next stage which is the exciting stage because we need to put everything together basically so we're going to be um, obviously making a lemon meringue tart, which is the smallest. But there is nothing stopping you from making a large lemon meringue pie as well. The only difference is what the pastry shell cases look like. So, I have already pre-made the pastry cases here into these cutesy little tarts. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? So we're, I'll be making tarts. You can make about 24 small little tarts with this recipe from the book, about 24 of them. And yes, I will still be sharing this recipe with you guys tomorrow on Facebook, so you don't have to wait. But you can make 24, you can make one really large, large lemon meringue pie, which is amazing. So I'm just gonna have a little look at our, our curd. It's thickened up really well. It's really lovely and thick. Now at this point in time, what you can do is you can get one of these which is a fine strainer, and you can strain the curd through this, and that will remove the actual pieces of lemon zest. So once you have cooked your curd, I would definitely suggest that that's what you do, is you push it through a fine strainer, and it'll remove any potential lumps, and also that lemon zest that's in there as well. So that's what you do in it, for, and then you're allowed to cool down. So once it's cool, you can then begin the task of filling your tarts, your cases. So you can kind of see this yellowness that we have. It's kind of cool, right? And um, the texture is, it's, it's a, almost a cross between a custard, like I said, and a curd. And I do like it a little bit like that because you then, you know, it's not too, it's not too firm. I don't like those curds that are almost basically a set jelly. I prefer there to be some movement in it. Now at this point in time, what I do suggest you do is have a bit of a taste and see what you think about the flavour. Doesn't taste like turmeric at all, by the way. But if you find that it's a little bit tart, by all means, you know, add a bit more um, inulin powder in there to get it to a sweetness that you like. But don't forget, this meringue is pretty sweet, so it does balance it out really nicely. Um, we prefer in our household to, it to be on the tart side. Mahali loves anything with lemon. So um, for, for us, we quite like it tarty, knowing that it's gonna balance out really well with the egg whites and of course, or the meringue, of course, don't forget guys, this recipe is from my new cookbook, about to be uh, released, well it's being released today for pre-sale, so let's treat yourself healthy. You can order your copy now. It's on special for pre-sale. We're looking to deliver it by September, early September to mid-September. It's going to be delivered to your door, but you can order your copy now. And it is on special. It's $39.95 Australian, including tax. All you can do is pay for the postage. Just go to treatyourselfhealthy.net.net and you can order your copy of not just this recipe, but 199 other recipes that are healthy treats, so guilt-free baking. Oh, I can't wait for you guys to get it. I'm super excited about it. It has been a labor of love, let me tell you. An absolute labor of love to get this book to you guys. About nine months in the making, 
but here we are. And I'm able to do this first cook the book cooking class with you guys. Straight from the book. All right. Apart from making a mess down there, the curd is looking good. I even might go as far as to tidy up my plate. The chef in me never, ever fails. Can't have drips. Oh, it's almost an like OCD when it comes to drips with all my 30 odd years of cooking professionally in kitchens. I can't handle it. All right, so our, our tart cases are full. I'm just gonna move it off to the side just for now because what I want to do with you guys Make sure that I'm out of the way, is to show you how to fill a piping bag, because this is definitely a technique as well. So I have here a professional piping bag, it's definitely an easy way to do meringue, but you could, if you don't have a piping bag, you could use a little plastic bag and just snip off one of the corners, not too big, don't snip it off too big, um, and then you can use that to pipe. And it does, I have done it in the past, it has worked, um, but there is definitely nothing quite as nice as, and this is washable, so these are reusable, which is really cool, and some of my piping bags I've had for many, many years, this one's made in Germany, it's telling me, it is definitely a professional one. So, you want to um, take your piping bag, add your nozzle, I'm using, can you see, it's kind of like a round nozzle, it's not too big, but once again it's up to you how you like to pipe your meringue, and then taking a spoon, which I don't have, I'm going to use my spatula, you just want to see I folded it in half because it almost like create a little a little cuff on there and that put, I can put my hand under the cuff. I learned this from a pastry chef by the way. This is how you fill a pastry bag. Put the cuff over your hand because it's going to hold your pastry bag or your piping bag open and it's also going to protect your hand from getting dirty. <laughs> I don't think it's the reason why but this is how um, a pastry chef actually taught me how to fill a piping bag and you only fill it, you tend to only want to fill them halfway. It's just easier to work with and you can always add more in. But you'll see why that cuff that I've created over my hand becomes very, very handy when it's time to start piping. So you want to fill it up about halfway with the meringue. That should be enough, I reckon, to do so. I'm only doing six. You will get 24 out of this recipe, don't forget. So if it's a bit much, half it, you just will get 12, you get a dozen. And then we're just going to fold over, just like this. We're going to fold over. And then just gently applying a bit of pressure until I see the meringue starting to come out of the, uh, of the case. Mahi is watching me intently. He wants to know how to do this as well. We're going to start to pipe. And the best way to do it is just to apply even pressure. I'm just going to go around the edge of the case. And then I'm just going to start to build my meringue up. Just like that. See? Ha ha ha! I know, it's cool, right? So we do it again. And just begin to build up. Look, if you don't have a piping bag, there's also nothing stopping you from just using a spoon and dolloping it on top. You can totally do that. You don't have to, you don't have to be as, quite as fancy as this. But I have to admit that these little swirls that we've got going on make for very, very cool looking tarts when you have finished. They look very cute and very, very professional. All right, so we're gonna just keep on going like that. But as I was saying, there is nothing stopping you from just using a spoon. I'll show you actually, because I've got a little bit of mixture left, left over in my bowl. I'll show you what that can look like. So if you just put a dollop, dollop. Dollops are good. It still looks very cool. It almost looks like you've got a little pavlova on top there. So if you do decide to dollop, kind of create some leverage by doing that and you'll get a funky looking meringue at the same time. No one would even know that you dolloped. Alright, so at this point in time you can pop these onto a tray, obviously not in a plastic tray, but you can pop these onto a tray and then pop them in the oven to brown up. So I'm just going to make sure I get the right temperature in the oven. You want to set it on grill, just on grill, which is top or broiler. Pop them into the oven. They only need a couple of minutes to brown up. Do not walk away at this point in time because this will burn very, very, very easily. I want to emphasize very and easily there when it comes to grilling in the oven or under the broiler. I prefer to do this, which is basically a little blowtorch. And I wish I could get closer for you guys because I want you to see just how easily this meringue does cook up. It is pretty awesome. So you just want to make sure when you are doing this 
that you aren't getting too close with the blowtorch because you can see just how quickly the meringue browns up and it's very quick to go from brown to burnt. So just be, you know, sort of play around with how far to stand back with your blowtorch and keep a close eye on it. But you really do get to have some fun now as you can see. Because look at the swirlies on this one. Oh, it looks like the marshmallow man. It looks wonderful. And the smell, you know, if you like s'mores, this is kind of what it smells like. It smells like marshmallows that have been inside the oven. Or been inside the fire, I should say. Or the oven, and they've got lovely and toasted. This is the smell that's coming off it. And this is the sensation you're going to have from these as well. So after a bit of blue torching fun, or you popped it into the oven room, or you put it under the grill, what are you starting with? You start off with a meringue that looks like that. What do you end up with? Well, you end up with something pretty fabulous. You end up with that. Isn't she gorgeous? And what's really amazing is this is all really, really good for your body. So remember we're talking about cooking food or baking items that are guilt-free and healthy and you get to become the master of the guilt-free healthy baking in your house you become the master all you need to do is get a copy uh, a copy of the new book ready for pre-release which is treat yourself healthy just go to treatyourselfhealthy.net remember 200 recipes 200 recipes of all the pies puddings cakes sweets treats crackers, drinks, I was trying to think, cheesecakes, um, celebration cakes, picnic type items, anything you could possibly imagine that's healthy, good for you, and also available now through our store, you can get your copy today. I'm excited. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoy this recipe. I'll be sharing the recipe with you guys on Facebook tomorrow and on modkai.com where we'll be sharing all our wonderful recipes. Join me at Modkai. Join me on Facebook. Join me on YouTube. Until then, I'll see you next time in Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. Take care, guys.